So David Bocci, being the gem that he is, listened to your input about the Gantt chart and added a timeline scroll zoom to it. So this is the free Deneb template that's available on his GitHub. So you can now scroll in and out or jump directly to years, months, or days. So what we're gonna do today is put our planner data in here and I'm gonna show you how to change the colors in the date format. So this will work with any task data that reliably has a start and end date. We're gonna use our planner data set from one of my other videos where we pull our planner data with Power Automate into Power BI. I'll link to that in the video description, but you don't have to use planner data with this. It's just something people have been asking after. So I thought I'd two birds, one stone. I'm gonna show you where to get the templates. It's in David Bocci's GitHub. I'm gonna put a link to this in the video description also, and he's got all sorts of good stuff in here, but we're gonna be using the Gantt chart folder. And the one that we want is the pbix file. So download the pbix file. Do not download the JSON file. The JSON file has data in it already. So if you're trying to use it with other data, it won't work. You want the 2.0 pbix. 2.0 is the one with the scroll zoom. And then just hit the download button in the corner on GitHub. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna open the pbix, copy the JSON out, and then put it into our other report. So what I'm gonna do is go to the ellipses menu up here on this Gantt chart and then go to edit. And we're gonna copy everything from the specification box. And then we're gonna head back over to our report. So I'm gonna pull up a blank page here and we're going to go to the ellipses menu in the visuals pane on the right hand side, get more visuals. And then we're gonna search for the Deneb custom visual. Not all organizations allow you to use custom visuals by the way. So if this menu doesn't work, that's probably why. And then we're gonna add it to our page. So in the grand scheme of things, Deneb is a very trusted custom visual. So you don't really have a lot to worry about security wise with this particular one. I would hazard to say most senior BI developers use this at one point or another to take their visualization one step further. It's a good skill to get in your toolbox, basically. All right, so now we're gonna add our fields. And Deneb is very particular about the names of your field, so it's looking for things by field name. That means we need to match it up with our template in order to have it know where our data is. So in this template, what we want is the start date. So for us, that's the task start column if you're working with the planner data set. And I'm gonna rename this to start so that it matches the template. There's a way to do mappings in Deneb too when you hook everything up, but I had trouble getting those to show up in the menu. So I just like renaming them here. It just makes it easier for me. If you wanna use assignees, you can put assignees here. The assignees will show up in the tooltip in this Gantt visual and they'll show up to the right of the bars. I'm gonna skip it for mine because I don't want them. And next we need completion. So completion is not completed date, it is task progress. So this is the percent complete and it's out of 100. So if your number isn't out of 100, multiply it by 100 first, okay? I'm gonna name that completion. The assignee column is optional, by the way. It's not required. Some of these are required. So next up is dependencies. Dependencies is an optional field. So if you don't have dependencies, which will be the case if you're working with planner data from the non-premium planner, you can skip this one. All this is is comma separated task IDs that depend on each other and it'll connect the bars with a line in the visual. And then we have end. So for end, so for end, I'm gonna use the task due date, not the task completed date, because the task complete date is only going to be filled out for completed tasks and we need all of our tasks to have a start and an end date, right? So we're gonna do task due and we're gonna rename that to end. And then we need a task ID. So that's this one here, ID. And next up is milestone. So non-premium planner, again, does not have milestones. This is a true false column. If you're working with premium planner data or data from another system, um, you could have a milestone column. I added one here just for funsies. I just joined in a table of true false values to my task IDs. And then next up is phase. For phase, I'm using the bucket. So the planner bucket name, but you could, if you're working with a data set that has planner data from multiple plans, you could use the plan name here. Or again, if you've got data from another system, whatever you want to group it by goes in here and call it phase. And then last is the task name. And that just needs to be called task. Now we're ready to go. Let's see if this worked. I'm going to go to the ellipses menu for this visual and then click on edit. And then we're going to select Vega, the create using Vega down here. Don't do Vega light. I accidentally tried that first and it didn't work. 
So click the create button and then we're going to paste in that JSON that we copied from the other template and then push this play button here to apply. And this looks really funky to start and that's because it's pulling in a bunch of my task data that doesn't have start and end dates. So this is what it looks like if you don't have your start and end dates in there. I'm going to filter those out. So we're just going to select all and remove blank. So that looks a lot better. I'm also just going to filter this down on the plan name here. So we're going to do plan name and then this one. All right, so now if we go back to our report with this back to report option, this is what it looks like. So we're looking pretty good here. Um, I have this phase four that only has one task in it, and that's making the uh, task here look really funky. So I'm just going to take that one out. Your phases should be more than one day in duration if you want to avoid this. So the phase names here are coming from my bucket name. So I actually have phase one inside the bucket name. That's why it says phase one. That's not coming from the template. So when you're using this visual, you can click and drag to scroll it side to side. All right, so let's customize this. I'm gonna go into the ellipses menu to open those settings back up. We're gonna go to edit, and now we have our JSON specification here. So a lot of the important stuff is right at the beginning. So we have the colors right here. So these colors dark are going to be the colors that are used on the bars and then the colors light are going to be the uncompleted fill. So if I zoom out like this lighter blue here is going to be this one here. So we can replace these with other hex codes to change the colors. And I've got them up here. Let me show you what they are. So these are the ones that come with the template, these bright colors here. We're going to switch to these colors here and they go in the order that they're shown here. So if you only want to replace, say, the purple color, that's this third hex code value here. So you would just change that out for something else. I'm using the free version of Figma here to kind of lay out what I want to do for colors and just use their color picker. But there's all kinds of tools online. Use whatever tool you're comfortable with. I'm going to go and just copy and paste the hex codes for these into the JSON template. So I'll show you the first one and then I'm going to fast forward through the rest because it's going to be kind of boring. So this color is this hex code. So I'm going to copy that and then jump back over to Power BI. So I'm just going to replace the six character code right after that hashtag for the first color. And then we're going to do the same thing for all the rest of these colors. And by the way, if you need more colors than are in here, if you just add a comma after this last one, and follow the same pattern that it's already doing and just add more colors. It'll use whatever colors you have as it goes through the groups. I just realized I only actually have three buckets, so I only need three colors, but whatever. It's fine, we'll just leave it in there. And we're gonna push play to see what that looks like. Now, if we zoom out, you can see our lovely colors. All right, so if we scroll back over here, ooh, it looks like it uses the color on the hover too. I probably should have picked colors that were a little bit more distinct because these are very similar. So let's move on to the start and end dates. I'm gonna do Control F on my keyboard to bring up the finder. <laughs> Somebody told me about this in the last video, the last iteration of this, I didn't realize there was a search. You do control F, it pops up. We're gonna search for percent sign D. So percent sign D is going to bring us to where the date format is. And this one is set up with the day number first and then the month. In the US, we usually have the month number first and then the day. So we wanna swap that out. So you can see where this, you know, logically speaking, if you replace the D here with an M and then replace the M here with a D, this format is referenced in multiple places. We're gonna to have to update that in more than one spot. So just click the forward arrow to keep going and loop through all of these. And same thing here, so M, D. Let's see where else we got it. Another one, oh, this is all over the place, huh? D. You can push the apply button as we're going through these just to see what's been updated. So it looks like we've got our start and end dates as the tooltip updated. I think this percent V is probably the month name. Let's just try moving this over here and see what happens to us. Yeah, see how that moved over for the start date? So let's do the same thing for the end. So we're gonna move the percentage sign D after the B. All right, and let's double check and make sure we don't have any more. Okay, let's see, that one, this one. You could probably do a find and replace on this, but I get a little bit nervous when I do bulk find and replaces. All right, we've made it to the beginning. See if we broke anything. Nope, looks like we're good. It looks like the hover has the assignee in here, so I'm just gonna drop assignee in. 
Oh my goodness, I have caps lock on. So some other things you might want to change the color for are the background on these headings. So this light blue here, we could swap that to light gray or something that matches our theme. And same thing for the progress bars. So the easy way to find these is to just search for the hex codes that are that color. So I found those hex codes for you. I'm gonna put them in the video description and I'm gonna put them in a little pop-up text so you can actually read the characters. Let's maybe make it like a gray or something. Let's see, what do we wanna do? Okay, so let's see how this lighter gray looks. So we're just gonna paste it in over whatever that green color was. And now we need to take care of the outlines behind the bars. So the outlines are this slightly darker shade here. So we're gonna search for that. And here it is. So this one, I'm gonna just make it white. So what is that, F, 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 F. And we'll see how that looks. There we go. And then for the blue backgrounds, I'm gonna make that gray too, just for funsies. So that's this color down here. I'm gonna look for that and here it is. And we're gonna make that a light gray. So let's get a light gray shade, maybe like this. All right, let's see how this looks. I'm gonna go back to my report and show all. Oh, that's lovely, okay. And we could probably change the color of these buttons too because they don't really match now. So here's my trick for finding the colors, by the way. I just take a little screen snip of this, copy it, and then paste it on over here. And then I just use the eyedropper tool. So I'm gonna select the shape, click the eyedropper, click the color, and now we have the hex code. Let's look for this one. Looks like this one is used six times, so maybe I'm gonna try a find and replace all and see what happens to me. So we're gonna replace this value, replace all. I'm gonna replace it with just maybe that darker teal. Which is this one. Replace all, play. All right, oh, that looks nice. Okay, so my dependency line is going nuts here. It's because I manually typed in the IDs of things that depended on each other, and then I swapped to using a different set of IDs. So it's depending on a task that doesn't exist. So let me show you my super janky trick for putting in dependencies with the planner data where it doesn't actually have a way to track dependencies. So if we pull up a table of our task IDs here, I'm just gonna drop task ID into a table, and I'm gonna put the task name in so we can actually see it. All right, so for example's sake, we're gonna have this validate migration of IT content depend on the migration of IT content. So these task IDs from Planner are super gnarly. They're a bunch of letters and numbers. So if we want this task to depend on this task, we need to put the task ID value, I'm gonna copy the value in the dependency column for this task. So now if I go to the query editor, I'm gonna show you my janky trick. So I created a tables, so this enter data option here. We can put our task dependencies in here if we want to. So I have one, two, three, four in here, and that's why the line was going off to nowhere because our task IDs actually aren't one, two, three, four. So we're just going to delete these rows and we want this task to depend on this task. And you could set a milestone value here too. So if you want this to be true, you could have it be true. If you have multiple dependencies, just add a comma between them here, click okay. So you'd have one row in here for every task that depended on something else. And this one is in italic font because I've disabled the load on it because I joined it into the tasks table. So we're joining it into tasks because it actually wants comma separated values for this visual. And so that structure works out fine with using this table. So what we wanna do is just merge. So go to merge query queries. We merge in our dependencies. I don't recommend manually maintaining your dependencies in a table that you type in, by the way. I'm just showing you how I got it in there in case anybody's super desperate. Now we can expand this. Just click the double arrow and then expand out the dependencies. If you've got milestones too, you can expand that out there. All right, so we've got our dependencies column. It's called dependencies. <laughs> Right now, let's change the name of that. Okay, so now if we close and apply this, you can drop it into the table. Let's see if that actually fixed mine, by the way. Yeah, so it worked. This one is now dependent on this one up here, and you can see that when you hover on it, it highlights that line. Let's take that out. All right, and one more tip. So if you want to widen the 
task name column here, you can do that too. So let's go in to the edit menu and all of the width settings are right at the beginning here. So the task column width, that's 155 right now. We could set that to like 200 and see what it looks like. So now it's slightly wider. I think we can go up to like 40. Yeah, there we go. All right, so that was how to use David Bocci's updated 2.0 Gantt chart. And thank you very much to David Bocci for updating this because I know that we have all been wishing that it had the date hierarchy. So thanks for watching and have a great day.